Today's show is brought to you by CatConnection.com. Purchase all of your home brewing supplies and draft beer equipment with everyday low pricing and everyday flat rate shipping at CatConnection.com. This weekend only, get 10% off site-wide as part of Keck Connections Memorial Day weekend sale by using promo code MD2019. Again, 10% off site-wide at KeckConnection.com using the promo code MD2019. Entertaining, Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hey, welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like discussed on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in. I promise it's been tested since I last screw that whole thing up by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today, I'm joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson, as well as the President and Chief Keg Washer at kegconnection.com. The Oh my gosh, your head looks massive on camera today, Mr. Todd Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good. Good. Good, good. Uh, we, um, it wouldn't be a homebrew happy hour episode if I didn't screw something up, or, or, or I say I. Look, this is the one time I think I can uh, not have to get uh, blamed. Uh, Hangouts on air from Google is what we usually use to produce the show, and. Uh, Todd this morning was like, okay, let's do the show a little bit earlier than normal. I was like, no problem. That's fine. I have, I'll send all the show notes. We'll get it going. And then I go to launch Hangouts on Air and it doesn't work. Uh, it times out. Apparently on Down Detector, it's a known issue. No ETA on when to be fixed. Normal Google Hangouts works. So you say, oh, that's great. Except that now I'm having to like manually monitor the little thing at the bottom to switch. So whoever's talking, this video episode may be... A, a burning pile of garbage from a production standard, but we're that's not really that far off from what it normally is. So we'll, we'll bring you as good a show as we can in content to make up for it. But um, we have a lot to talk about before we get to the questions of today's show. Uh, number one, just a reminder, we are going to be at Homebrew Con June 26th through the 29th in Providence, Rhode Island. We have booth 719, which will have Brewer's Friend, Homebrew Supply, and CM Becker. Uh, Todd, I'm super excited about, about Homebrew Con coming up. We have some cool uh, stuff to show at the booth. You're going to be uh, meandering around, uh, schmoozing, because uh, everyone recognizes you and doesn't forget who you are and doesn't require you to reintroduce yourself every time. Uh, we are James as well. James has, I think we talked about before on another. So you have those, do you have one handy to show those cool little flashlights that you had made? I'm, I'm, yeah. make, I'm making him get a oh, Look at that. And they, they're uh, LED. Those things are cool, man. Oh, I use them when I'm looking into the fermenter. I use them all the time. Yeah, those came out really good. I was impressed with uh, with with how those are. So you come by there, you'll get that kind of swag. We have homebrew supply buttons being made. We have uh, we we'll have stickers galore, and I'm still working out the kinks on what we're gonna do for uh, the podcast specific swag. I promise it'll the sign up sheet will be up as soon as we can. Have that. Um, also, before we, uh, some other small talk, like you heard in the bumper before, uh, Todd, I, I was going to put a cheers, like the clapping uh, uh, sound effect for this weekend's Memorial Day sale at Keg Connection. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're ready for a big sale. So are you, are either one of you guys brewing for the, I know, well, okay, James. I, I, I'll be in Hawaii. I, I've said that a lot in the last. I spent that a lot in the last oh. couple of weeks. Every time y'all are like, are you going to do this? Do you want to do this? Can you help with this? I'm like, I'll be in Hawaii. I forget. So, yeah, the uh, same question. Uh, the question really should be aimed for you. James, are you brewing this week, or is there so much beer being fermented that you're not brewing? I don't know. I kind of – I didn't brew. Yeah, I did brew last week. You I was wanting to brew. Yeah, I was I was planning on brewing Friday, but oh, uh, I will I guess, be here Friday. I guess we, I yeah. could help you brew Friday. Yeah, there's something different I want to do. 
Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, well, you have to tell us, or is it is it a secret? It's secret. Oh, okay. Oh, is it gonna be? Is it gonna go online with our lo- with our new uh, slogan? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. Uh, that's okay. So Todd did about an hour ago. Todd did tell me. He said, "Hey, when we're on the the show, remind me to tell you what our new slogan is." And I don't know if it's a slogan for the podcast. I don't know if it's a slogan for the company. But Todd, what is the new slogan you asked? No, me? because James, James, myself, and to you and Joe, to some extent, we're always brewing different uh, recipes to try them out, and often uh, they're not what we expect them to be which is what, what you do. I mean, you, you brew recipes, you try new things, and sometimes you get cr- incredible new beers. And sometimes, well, my new slogan is, we brew crappy beers so you don't have to. Oh, well, yeah. That, yeah that's, that, that's sort of been my life motto, but not necessarily brew, but just like, yeah. Uh, yeah, because that's what we end up doing. We We end up brewing a lot of crappy beers because we have to – we change the recipe. We create a new recipe. I mean, it's amazing how many times we hit it, like that lemon drop yeah. uh, hop beer was just incredibly good. And and you hit it on the first recipe. So I guarantee you now that we're going to try to change the recipe three more times and we're going to brew something crappy because it was too good on the first one and we have to change it. And and I've already talked about changing it, right? So, right, right. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, hopefully we do it in small, ch- make small changes and it won't affect it as bad. It kind of pisses you off when you got 15 gallons of beer that, that, <laughs> yeah. that you really don't want to drink. Like I have six beers on tap right now and there's a couple of them that you're like, they just keep sitting there, you know, and at some point, but you can't it's so hard to just say, you know what, I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm going to pour this beer out. It what didn't turn out exactly like we thought, but it just, it's almost... It's so hard to do, isn't it? Wait a it wait a second. I was just up there. You have six beers on tap. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure you only had two on tap. Six. Uh, oh yeah, oh, God. <laughs> he he's. I mean, he won't try anything else. He comes in and he's like, <laughs> oh, I, I like this beer. I'm gonna drink this beer all night. So I'm like, no, you have to try this other beer. So he's like, he had one glass of it. He's like, yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and drink this beer now because <laughs> that's the beer I'm drinking this week. So. That, that pale was good, and I tried more. I had I had a couple of uh, I had uh, two glasses of of the alt. I yeah. had uh, an untold number of the Kolsch. Uh, the ESB was fantastic. Oh, and, the, so that one was that that wasn't one of the six beers. The oh, ESB. good point. You're I right. I pulled that. I pulled a sample out of the fermenter. Which we're carbonating in the fermenter now, so you can actually get a carbonated beer out of the fermenter. And that beer turned out good, didn't it? That ESB, and it's not even done yet. And I'm ready good. to try because I was yeah. a big fan of that last one. Yeah, yeah so I'm excited about that one. Uh, yeah. yeah, you guys, you, are- you nailed that recipe, James. That's a good recipe. Well, let's let's brew another batch so we can have some. Well, we I have 15 gallons. Yeah, we're Wait, take- we're, we're taking that to the homebrew, Connor. You want to take the pale out? We're going to take one. I think we're going to take one of each. Okay. So I'm going to give you a keg of the ESB. I'm going to keep a keg of the ESB and we're going to, we're going to let these other people have a keg of it. These idea. other people, <laughs> the, the, the wonderful visitors of booth 719 is what Todd means. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I mean, uh, you wonderful people out there. Todd. Yeah, he, you know what he did? We did the pale ale, which was the first beer we did on the system. And he was like, Oh, you've got to, I've got you a keg of beer. And I'm like, Hey, this is pretty cool, you know. And then he gets another <laughs> ESP. Hey, I'm gonna get you. Hey, I like this too. Yeah, yeah. He is always sharing beer with you. I, he is. You know how hard it is for uh, me to bring beer back from him. Uh, <laughs> both of you guys, you guys are all buddy buddy with your beer. I, hey, uh, I don't. You don't help us brew, and you don't bring <laughs> us beer. I brought you beer. Uh, if people, you want you want to be it's technical. It's just all about your needs. <laughs> You want to be te- you want to be technical, Mister Burns. Uh, my yeah. name is on the address for most of those beer shipments that come in. Just, I mean, just just saying, people the people love me, and uh, I agree. Not your address, though. Not your address. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Speaking of which, uh, from now on, you pay the rent on the building, <laughs> and you can have all the beer that comes here. Oh, no. 
Okay, moving on. Uh, sp- well, speaking of which, and this was not listener sent, Todd, uh, I'm looking forward to the next trip up there because Todd brought back from Minnesota. Minnesota. No, no, no. I shipped it. Yeah. Uh, I, that's I, what I'm I, saying. I, well, I, yeah. I was saying it wasn't a listener. It was you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought back a ton of Surly beer. Uh, oh, wait, okay. so, Surly and two other breweries. I was in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I went to Surly, which was incredible. And then I also I, I bought a couple of other Beers that I didn't I didn't even try when I was there because I didn't go to those breweries, but they're supposed to be really good. So I, I it's gonna be exciting to try all those. Yeah. I'm I'm locking them in a room until I get back from Hawaii. <laughs> and then we'll all try them together. It's almost as if you've had an issue with people drinking your beer at the office. That's weird. I, I didn't oh, know. I was more worried about the two people that are gonna be staying in my barn <laughs> while I'm gone. <laughs> and I, hey, for, for clarification, I'm not one of them. He's not talking about me. Uh, uh, I, I, oh, I, no, James, I gave you some though right you so, did you were very good at you, that what do you think i love them yes all of them tell uh what to talk a little about uh the uh surly coles was my favorite of course and it was a little hoppier than than uh a coles technically could be but it was in a good way well i don't know i really like now i didn't you know to be fair i didn't try it in a can i tried yeah. it on draft and it's their seasonal yeah, and the one I tried wasn't very hoppy at all. So maybe there, it's a little bit different recipe in the can. Well, I, well let me let me very let good. me say that it's hoppier than I do my colch. Okay, okay, fair and enough. I, and mine is in the guidelines, so yeah, I don't know that that might be pushing the IBUs according to the style guideline. For I'll, I'll have to try the can because the one I tried uh, wasn't very hoppy. But at your all. your your hop. Taste buds and my hop taste buds are there's no comparison. It's apples to oranges. Right, true. Yeah, yeah everybody has their own taste palette. So yeah. And mine's just garbage, uh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I think I've already told the story where I embarrassed myself with James's fourth or fifth iteration of that Kolsch. And I was like, <laughs> he, he was like, try this. And I was like, oh, is that the new Vice Beer? It was a, it, he looked at me like I was the biggest idiot in the world. Rightfully so. It, it was a look that Todd has given me many times over the last <laughs> 11 years uh, tr- oh josh come on now it's true i'm yeah see i'm gonna say i'm in control of the camera i'm looking at you right now <laughs> anyway uh speaking of kolsch my dad and i just kegged our 10 gallons of kolsch Ooh. And pre-carbonation oh my gosh it came out good i got uh, a wonderful beer it, it it really is it is and and i it like i I don't want to take credit away from what anything we did or your recipe, but it just seems like such a hard thing to screw up. It just seems like... Oh, that's what's wonderful about it. It's a super simple, easy, good-tasting beer to brew. And yeah, the end result, I, like I said, I couldn't be happier. I, I have five gallons in my kegerator here because he didn't have the space for all 10 there, and he was trying to get the nerve of this guy. My brother has opened up a poker house or card house in Austin, Texas, and their grand opening is this Saturday. And my dad was like, what do you think about giving five gallons of that coal? Should let them use it for their grand opening? And y'all know I'm super selfish. I was like, no. Like, no. That just seems like a really nice thing to do for your brother to me. Yeah. It does. But I remember one time he punched me in the back of the head when I was nine. And I'm still holding on to that <laughs> grudge. And no, kidding aside, I'm not. But it's like. You ask me, we would have, I would have brewed something uh, special for it. I've been looking forward to this Kolsch. And again, it'd be easy enough to brew more. Uh, so the reality is we're probably going to give him the beer because I'm going to get, you know, suckered into doing it. But uh, the moral of the story is uh, I don't want to give away this. I was looking forward to this beer. The Kolsch, it, it is just, it was, it came out phenomenally. And I'm, I told my dad, I said, we just need to always have that on tap. Like, period. We just always need to have it on tap. Uh, whether it's your house or my house, realistically his house, uh, always need always need a keg of Kolsch on tap. Now, I do want to segue into uh, James, the alt. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. uh, how is, I have not heard any update. You did do a rebrew. You wanted to, you wanted to rebrew it. How, what's the status on that one? You happy with how uh, it's coming out? Don't really know yet. It's still pretty muddy. I cold crashed it today. So um, we'll have to see. Optimistic, at least. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you, you know, I, I did that. Uh, I had that same problem with that other beer, and I I made that uh, dip tube going through the, uh, the stopper, going into a glass carboy, so I was able to purge all CO two, and then I put it in there. I mean, it in about five days in there uh, after I 
cold crash and the other, it, it really cleared up a lot. So you could always try that. If I could yeah. bring you that stuff before I leave, if you want to try now, that. I was pulling it off a sample valve in the fermenter, the conical. So it had, it's only been going for. Oh, okay. Okay. So you uh, give, give it some time. Days. It. Yeah. It's, it's down. It hasn't, it, it hasn't moved gravity wise in, in a day or so. So I went ahead and hit the cold crash. It was at 10, 15. So. I James uh, and I, I wasn't doing that to poke at you as much as I admire your commitment to getting the alt you want because I I don't think you've said it enough to me that how how fickle and difficult that style is. It is. It is. It's truly, in my opinion, now I'm not everybody, but it it's one of the harder beers for me to brew, which makes yeah. it my, that much more admirable when you go to Dusseldorf and and you go to any given brewery and you get the same thing every you know what i mean like the fact that they're that they have it down to being able yeah. to pump out i mean because well i don't know their how their barrel system i don't know how many right. how much they're brewing at a time but it's pretty incredible to me i've been really on a kick of consistency with any brewery of any style of just mm-hmm. being like oh my gosh like how i can go get this beer in austin texas or in providence rhode island and it's going to taste the exact same that's incredible. I've yet to do that with any beer I've brewed. That's the end goal for me, I think, with yeah. with brewing. Yeah. But yeah, it's just I don't know. Here lately, I've been on one of those things, and anybody that brews can probably agree with me. I haven't haven't been on my game brewing, and it's starting to bother me. So you kind of go back to the fundamentals, and you know, start over again. So you need that's to see what a, we're going to try to do. do. I know they have sports psychologist, uh, maybe a brew psychologist. And we can get you out of this slump, James. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely in a slump. That's no doubt about it. I have to try to make light of it because otherwise it'll just be a bit. <laughs> um, we do. Well, so, yeah, we, we're going to have, uh, for sure, we know we're going to have the uh, Kolsch. We're going to have, uh, it sounds like ESB. Todd, you've made the executive choice to bring that to Homebrew Con. Uh, you, the Pale, y'all brewed. Uh, oh, what is Joe? The Mosaic Pills. The, yeah. I wish I had a screenshot of the artwork that Joe had me do for it. Uh, I love it was the the a famous jam band's n- trademark, but we changed it enough skull uh, with a <laughs> with a grapefruit in the middle. It still looked cool. They're gonna have oh, bo- that's, it yeah. is grapefruit because that pale ale is a grapefruit too. Oh, yeah, I mean it doesn't have any grapefruit in it, but it, the, the yeah. hops make it smell like grapefruit and taste a little like grapefruit. So yeah. we're gonna have two beers like that, I guess. Wonderful. I don't think pe- people who like those styles don't complain about that stuff. Grapefruit's very desired. Like I think on Homebrew Supply, the Summer Nights, which is one of the ones you're referring to. And, That's the one I'm bringing, yeah. Right. And I forget the other one that has the word uh, Ocarina. Uh, the Ocarina okay. grapefruit. are ve- Both of those are extremely popular recipes. I think people like that. You know, they like that grapefruit notes um, in, in the ar- aroma uh, of their IPA or their, for in your case, their pale. And, and, and why, when I tasted yours, it's, it's delicious. The pale is, it, it to me, again, my palate's garbage. How is it not an IPA? What am I missing? It's, well, it's, it's just not as hoppy. I mean, it's they're, they're nowhere near as hoppy as that. They make an IPA version of the exact same one, which is what Joe's bringing. So that'll be a good test. You could try both of them. And then you can tell the difference in the ones has a lot more hops than the other. It, that beer has a lot of aroma, but not as much hops. So you don't really, you don't, and I don't think it has that much grapefruit taste, but it really smells like grapefruit. It doesn't have that sour end to it like a grapefruit does, but it, it has a great aroma and it's just not as hoppy. Okay. Well, you're right. I'm, I'm, I must be being fooled by the aroma and it is a, it's a very hop forward aroma and it, it but you're right. It's not like, the the IPL is certainly an IPL. There's no question about well, that. Well, it has a, that beer has a lot of dry hop hops, but not that much. Like if you just go by the hops that aren't dry hop hops, it's about a twenty IBU. But it tastes and definitely smells like it's more than twenty IBU. So that's that's where I think where you get some of that. I think that when you really smell hops a lot, you automatically taste them more because you, those two things are so tied together. Right. And I, James in the corner there just shaking his head like, 
<laughs> I'm not the guy to talk to about this. I know. <laughs> well, which, which is why I didn't bring any of those questions today. And I'm going to segue <laughs> us in. We have two questions. We've already a small taught us for 20 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, question number one comes from our friend Brian A., who uses submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Brian wrote in, hey, guys, love the show. You guys need to put out two shows a week. If I could muster up the content, Brian, I would. Um, when repitching yeast, are you washing it, storing it, and then pitching it when need be? Or are you timing your next brew day to simply put your wort right on a yeast cake and a carboy after the previous beer is removed from that carboy or bucket? Also, is washing yeast worth it? I heard you can contaminate your yeast if it is not washed properly. I'm going to throw it to you, James, first, because you've been on a kick of preserving, for the Kolsch at least, yeast. Yeah. You have a lot of experience with it. Uh, we'll, we'll go all into how many repitchings you think is the ideal number, how you do it, all that. But taking Brian's question, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you can wash yeast. You just got to make sure when you wash yeast, typically what you want to do is you want to put uh, – you want to put the yeast in a in a in a vessel and use four times the amount of yeast as liquid or four volumes. Shake it up real hard. And then whatever settles at the bottom, you don't want to keep that. You want to take off the liquid and then keep the middle, so to speak. And you can do that several times. Just make sure you boil your water, cool it back down, of course. You don't want boiling water into yeast. Um, you can do that, of course. I tend to be a little lazier when it comes to repitching yeast. So I'll do the latter in the questions. I'll just wait and time to pitch over onto a new batch when I'm pulling it out of the fermenter. Uh, I have in the past washed yeast or rinsed it and uh, it seems to help as well. In fact, I'm going to do a batch that I saved from two weeks ago. And, uh, but as long as you keep it clean and you're using sterilized containers and you're smart about it, if you dry hop, of course, you probably wouldn't want to use yeast from a dry hop unless you would go into a secondary and then dry hop the secondary and then save the yeast from the first on the primary. But uh, make it fun and and uh, don't overthink it. Just make sure that you're using sanitized uh, spoon, sanitized container, and boiled water, boiled and then cooled water, and I think you'll be fine. couple things real quick uh, for me. I admit, is washing and rinsing synonymous? Is that the same thing when people use those terms? <laughs> no, because if you if you want to really get down, and this is another rabbit hole. Wonderful. Uh, you know, you can do what's called rinsing, which I guess technically would be what I, what I just explained and what I do. Now, when you get into washing, what you have to do is you actually have to, it's a whole different process. So... That's one of those things where you would need to get uh, go online, go to Google and and get a good yeast book that, that explains the, the procedure, because, you know, it's fairly involved and it's fairly technical when it comes to washing yeast, because then you have to deal with the pH and in the slurry and, and it involves phosphoric acid and you use phosphoric acid in cleaning the yeast. And a lot of them, I would I would expect the major yeast manufacturers like Imperial, they do the same thing. But I've never gotten that technical with it and had fantastic results. Right. And I was going to say, every time I come there, it, uh, there's always that container in the fridge of, yeah. I guess that's your Kolsch yeast, right? It, it is. Yeah. I, had, I, I try to save all the yeast I can. I wish I would have saved the uh, lemon drop, but I didn't pull it in time before we dry hopped it. And uh, that would have been a great starter for another batch because uh, as with lager yeast, you can't pitch them as many times as you can ale yeast, but lager yeast, you require such big numbers for pitching that uh, that would have been fantastic for the next batch, the next, next test batch of the lemon pills. Yeah. And Todd, I, I've, I threw it to James because obviously that's what we do on questions, but uh, I don't recall you ever having saved washed rinse whatever yeast is there a reason or have you first no, no, i have an extremely good reason for that i get an unlimited amount of free yeast all <laughs> yeah. that i want from uh imperial in particular which is my favorite yeast and uh basically if i use it to test recipes which all my recipes are test recipes yeah. uh, they uh they give me free yeast and i love their yeast and so yeah i use that 
This portion is not paid for by Imperial Yeast. I just <laughs> say that real quick. Uh, wait, wait. Sometimes I feel like I, I, I don't know if Casey over there, she is a real cool chick. I don't know if she still uh, listens or not at all. But uh, we've we they we've never I've just never talked to them. They were like, oh, maybe we could sponsor the show sometime. And and I guess really now they just I've never followed up with them. So they're probably thinking they talked so good about us already. Let's not follow up with Joshua. Let's just let's just <laughs> let's just free for puzzling. Yeah, let's well, just I mean, yeah, Casey, I love you. I mean, free yeast. A guy loves that. Yeah, yeah. I really really appreciate it. Owen, Thank yeah, you. Owen over there, y'all are doing yeah, great work. Yeah they're, yeah, they're doing good stuff. But um, I guess you know just. To to wrap up Brian's part, the 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 is it worth it? Now I know that's subjective, I, but what do you think? I don't think I think rinsing is just fine. I think if you want to do rinsing, uh, I think you're going to have good results. There's been times I'll be honest with you, I don't even rinse it, and I've had phenomenal success repitching yeast. Dumb luck, or because of just- I don't know. I had four straight. I did a, a test batch with just straight repitches, no rinsing or anything four straight batches and, and uh, it, it, every single one was better than the next. He's extreme. He's extremely careful with it. Yeah. He makes absolutely positively sure that everything's sanitized. Uh, he, so, I mean, you, you just have, if you're extremely careful, it works well. Yes. yes you do have hazard. It doesn't work. I mean, you gotta, before you pour it into the vessel, you got to make sure everything's sanitized. And that, James is fanatical about that. So Yeah, and you have to be as long as you're that. But you should be. Most humbers should be that way. So if you're that way by nature, you'll be just fine repitching. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian, for submitting the question. Moving on to question number two, which is almost a continuation of it from Lawrence P., who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Lawrence wrote, hello, fellas, or I guess howdy, since you are from Texas. On previous episodes, you gush about Imperial yeast like we just did. And it seems like Imperial pushes the idea that if you use their product, then you will never need to make a starter. Do you guys buy that or is it just marketing? I also want to know when you think a starter is necessary and why a starter might be necessary. I brew 10-gallon all-grain batches and I've always made starters, but it's because I've always believed that it was necessary because that's what the forums have always said. Love the show. Hope you take my question. So, yeah, continuing on, uh, grabbing from what you said a a little bit earlier, James, about lager, I know Mm -hmm. with lagers, it's probably a great idea to over pitch and I'm doing air quotes because I don't know if you can over pitch or use a starter. Is there any, do you agree? That's, I totally agree with the lager because it requires, it requires a lot more numbers of yeast compared to an ale uh, because of the nature of the fermentation It's cold. So it's a little slower process than an ale yeast, but you do have better results if you have a higher pitch count versus a lower. But I will say with Imperial that you got to understand that I can remember they first came out with liquid yeast and it was a hundred billion cells right. and thought that was great. Well, that's good in a four or 5% beer, but if you get up over six, seven, eight percent, yeah, you're going to have to have a starter. You're going to have too much lag time and not a good, good result. So absolutely starters are necessary. But when Imperial came in, they kind of changed the game. They doubled what anybody else was doing in liquid yeast. And uh, we don't, Todd can back me up. We don't do starters. We just no, I have, I have, since I started using Imperial yeast, I have never done a starter, even with a lager. Now, uh, to be fair, if I'm brewing a 10-gallon batch, I use two packages. I mean, I don't want somebody to think, oh, it's great. It's got so many cells. You can use one package and do a 15-gallon batch, and you're going to be fine. You may be fine. I just don't have tried it because I don't want to screw up a 15-gallon batch of beer. So I, if I'm doing 15 gallons, I use three. If I'm doing 10, I use two. I've, I've never – I mean, I've, I can't tell you how many batches of beer – and James can validate this, that we have brewed where we have pitched the yeast. And if, if we, for some reason didn't leave for a long time, it was actually starting to ferment before we, before we left. Like I brewed a batch of beer one morning and I'd brewed a second batch later that day. And when I finished the second batch, the first batch was already fermenting. It was already bubbling. That's how fast it is. So it's good product. Yeah. And it, you know, there's lots of yeast calculators online or yeast pitch calculators. I remember the, the oldest one I can remember was Mr. Malty and they had one on there. And if you're in doubt, do run the numbers, but we haven't had to even worry about that with Imperial. Now, that being said, if you're going to do a high, super high gravity beer, 
absolutely you need to double up you need to make sure you have the right amount of cells and you need to have a lot of oxygen in the wort there's a whole different ball game when you're talking big beers but if you're talking session beers anywhere under five and a half six percent under six percent yeah you can you can you can use imperial is what we use and we don't have to worry about it you know what else i think's really helped james is now that we're using the big fermenter and we're taking that pump and the pump's basically taking it to the top of the fermenter and in a fairly small stream shooting right. it into the fermenter we're oxygenating the crap out of that beer yeah so yeah. we've got really oxygenated beer and we've got really good yeast True. And I, I think both of those things together help a lot yeah they're they're important it's that triangle that fermentation triangle you got to have sugar you got to have oxygen you got to have yeast yeast numbers so and love you have to have love. love lots yeah. of love lots of love <laughs> sometimes sweat uh if when i'm brewing with my dad sometimes i have tears um it's all all of the above i wanted to bring up two things one uh you you kind of covered my question or what i was about to ask already james but if you don't do a starter you just need to pitch that much more yeast correct that's correct you need to know what you need for a given batch okay and, and the good thing about Imperial is it's doubled up. It's basically two packages of the competitor's yeast, uh, as long as it's fresh. Now, the, the freshness state, you know, there, there's viable cells, and every day it gets older, there's less viable cells in a pack. Well, then so, their freshness state's only half of what everybody else's is. They perfectly, exactly. they say ours is only good for three months. Everybody else says six months. Well, I'm not sure if everybody else says that, but right. they say three. The yeast... It's, it's not because it's a different yeast. They're just saying, we think you should use it within three months and not wait and use it six months later. So, yeah, that's true. And, and, you know, in the past when we've tried that, I haven't really had very good results on really old yeast. <laughs> we, you know? in fact, remember the one where we had really, we had yeast that was like five or six months old and yeah. we put like four or five packets in and it still took it's still forever stuck. to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't know if y'all recall because it was kind of a hazy visit up there, but last year's homebrew con before the actual show, we toured Imperial and we, we interviewed Owen. It was a great time. We had a blast, yes. but remember he was very, I wouldn't say, uh, offended, but he was certainly very. <laughs> he didn't like my question. <laughs> he was convicted in the notion that you don't use starters. He was almost Not like, this product. yeah, yeah. He was almost like, period. And, and remember, I think his answer, and I don't remember if it was on air or off air, because we we talked to him a ton all, after recording. Yeah. We, we were there a while. It was off air. Yeah. And, and do you remember though him saying uh, something along the lines of like, if you ever feel like you need a starter, call me. Yeah. Yeah. He said, call me. Tell me how big a batch you're doing, and I'll send you the right size yeast. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool. Owen's a good guy. He really is. He is. And I thought that was an incredible answer because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to call this guy like, yeah. <laughs> now and see what he thinks. But, yeah, I I, I remember he did an episode of um, the Beer Smith podcast with Brad Smith, who, again, if y'all listen to any other homebrewing podcast, he, you, he's either hit or miss because people don't like – he has that old-time radio, he does. Well, welcome yeah. back to the Beer Smith, you know, and his interview style, he's very – I love him. I the guy is super yeah, cool too. too. His software is incredible too. You know, we're he, he's a good dude. But he uh, he interviewed Owen, and I think that's the only time where I think in the comments people were like, "Man, is that Owen guy really didn't like uh, Brad talking about <laughs> yeah. starters?" You know, like, they go to the. Oh, are you serious? Oh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the the flip side of that's Joe. You know, Joe with Homebrew Supply, he he brews quite a bit, and he almost always just used the dry yeast and sprinkles yeah, it on the top. Did. Yeah, and he, uh, yeah, I've never seen him have a problem. So maybe we're overthinking it. I don't know, but yeah. he he's done really well that with that technique. Yeah, sure. yeah, true. And and I've just always just read the recipes and followed it. I haven't never experimented, but I <laughs> I have only uh we did a uh what was the recipe that I think it was the ESB that you it used to include a different yeast in there. And I believe yeah. every other brew day I've ever done has all has always been imperial. Uh, yeah. Again, per recipe, James James was the earliest convert in our circle. He he used it, and then he said, "You're this is what you're using." I don't think you, <laughs> didn't, you, you didn't give me an option. <laughs> no, you didn't. I I told I told like me. Yeah, <laughs> I said James made me a recipe, and uh, oh, I thought I thought on the pack or on the old sheet it said use this one. You said no, this is what you're using. It was like a Jedi mind trick thing. Like this is not the yeast. 
Hey, uh, can I can I say something totally off subject? I guess. I've noticed that you have your founder's breakfast stout shirt on, which you were at one point banned from talking about that beer anymore on the show. But uh I've I would just like to say that I think that you've shied away or something. I mean, you're you're no longer a team player on this because Whoa. I have had two founders breakfast stouts prominently displayed in my beer fridge for six months now for six months and you have not touched them and when you've been there almost every other week or more i i haven't seen them they're in your fridge i had no <laughs> way you can miss them i've pointed them out to you Wait, okay to, to my credit name the last beer i've had out of that beer fridge that that wasn't one you brought to me Na- name one beer i've had out of your beer fridge in the last six months I, I honestly can't. I can barely remember the beers that you get out of the beer <laughs> fridge at the end of the night every time. No, yeah, I, I don't. I know. don't. I, what are you talking about? I've always poured from your kegerator. You've had beer on tap <sighs> consistently for a year plus. Yeah. It's been a while since you haven't. And the last time was that taste test. We had two taste test nights. Just saying, I bought you some, so you'd always you're be there tra- for no, you're, you don't drink it anymore. For two yeah. things. You're trying to call me out, and I'm going to kick your ass next time I'm up there. Uh, so we're going to wrestle. We're going to have the rematch. Uh, secondly, uh, you, uh, you, if you didn't have Kolsch or ESB or Alt on tap, I would open your beer fridge. No offense. Uh, I would much rather have a, a draft beer than pop the top. Thank you, James. I would. But, yeah. Just, the whole experience. It's but, all those and, be- and to be honest, he has some pretty damn good beers on tap. So he really I mean, has. pulled from the fridge when we can pull from a tap. See, Todd? Yeah, no, I, I can see that, yeah. Todd, you're try- you are just trying to make it awkward between me and Founders. And I- <laughs> <laughs> Founders, he's... He let you down. I'm, I'm trying. I'm that. still trying to get I, I, it's just anything. I want them to acknowledge I exist. This, I have daddy issues, apparently, with founders. <laughs> I'm trying. Like, just give me attention. They had that, like, f- fan contest not that long ago. Was it last year? Like, when, like, how, it's like their IPA all day uh, contest or their gold something contest. Show us the beer and how it affects your life. And I didn't actually do the photo yeah. part of it. Be good in some instances. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> IPA all day long is not always a good thing. You're right. Well, so I think it was. Just, I think what people found out is uh, there's a ton of alcoholics that drink Founders. <laughs> is what uh, they found out. <laughs> but besides, I've that, been drinking IPA for 14 hours yeah. now. I love yeah. you. Yeah. How you did know, it, for an interesting photo contest? Uh, how did it affect my life? Well, I'm on dialysis. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, Lawrence, thank you for submitting good. your question. Uh, we that that does it. That wraps it up for today's show. I do like Brian suggested we do two shows a week. I don't think that's in the near future. But what is in the near future? What I forgot to bring up at the top of the show is we have uh, the production room is really shaping up. Uh, Todd's right hand man, Vilver, he, he's put in a lot. I mean, he got a lot done yesterday. Oh, I forgot to send you a photo. It's all done. The sides and everything. I'll send it to you after the show. Uh, and it looks I'll, really I'll, nice. I'll post it up because i'm i'm super excited we're gonna have a ton of videos james you wouldn't believe how many people have been sending us video uh what we should be making videos of suggestions and and a lot of that involves you you were you're a star my friend people said (laughs) no i'm not i'm well well Well, you know he just looks good on camera you know that's what it is he just that face and i've actually never said that to me before (laughs) i'm actually gonna forward you the email from someone someone used my phrase i used uh handsome james they said they said any video with handsome james on it and i i sent them a gift card to cat connection just for making oh, me laugh oh there you go yeah. <laughs> anyway guys oh, I, wow. I, I, I appreciate y'all's time uh and we will do this again soon i'll oh, todd enjoy hawaii james i will see you soon my friend hey maybe i could do one from hawaii huh oh yeah. if you're up for it you're you're very far behind us so it'd have to be uh an evening show i guess for us perhaps yeah i could do it on my laptop at least one that'd be fun yeah, yeah, let's do that the, it, it would be a blast to get the beach what, in there what and stuff. It, in the background yeah yeah definitely what is it the, the, is, is it six or seven hour difference behind six us? hour yeah six hour okay yeah we could totally make that work i mean now i'm gonna have to actually work during the work day and you're gonna know i am but we could do, we could do it if it's behind right so yeah he gets up at like six with the sun coming up and we could do it uh, at noon you know, our time. Yeah. That afternoon. That would be perfect. Okay. Yeah. 
Todd, is, I don't that, know a, if, is that a deal? I'm not sure I'm going to be getting up at six while I'm on vacation <laughs> in Hawaii, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't you don't sleep well. We know you don't. You don't yeah. sleep well. Anyway, uh, we will do it soon, guys. I will talk to y'all soon. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, KetConnection.com, for supporting our podcast and the homebrewing community. This weekend only, promo code MD2019 is to get you 10% off site-wide. Take advantage of it while you can. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening.